You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. I've said it before. I'll say it a thousand times. I'll say it till the day I'm dead, which uh, who knows when that's going to be. I enjoy cheeseburgers too much. There is not one sin that Jesus did not die for on the cross for you. When we say it, it's like, yes, I know. I know every sin is forgiven. I know that Jesus died for the little sins. I know he died for the big sins. He died for every sin in between. But when we talk about this, we need to remember Jesus died not for generic sins or abstract sinfulness. He died for people. He died for real people who have been corrupted by sin to free them from sin in the forgiveness of it. So let's talk about real people. Who's one of the big first sinners? Now we have Adam and the woman, right? Their sin, we see it in Romans. Romans 1, it says they exchanged the truth of God for the lie. They believed the serpent instead of God and exchanged his lie for the truth. And into the world comes sin. They recognize their nakedness. They're cast out of paradise. And what happens from there? Now everyone is born, conceived in this inherited sin. Adam passes it down like we read in Romans 5. So Abel inherits it and Cain inherits it. So they go and they bake their sacrifices, right? God accepts Abel and his sacrifice. And we read in Romans that it's because of faith. Right? By faith, God acknowledges this sacrifice, but Cain, he does not acknowledge. And remember, Cain, he gets furious. He's jealous of God's love for his brother. So, what does he do? Does he pray about it and say, God, take this jealousy away from me? No. <laughs> Instead, he says, Hey, bro, let's go out into the field and hang a little bit. And then, boom, he kills him. Now, we say it's with a rock, right? But we don't really know. But inevitably, Cain kills his brother Abel out of anger and jealousy and envy, all these things. And when God then comes to Cain, Cain lies about it. Am I my brother's keeper? And God punishes Cain, casts him away and says, you will be a wanderer on the earth. And in the English, it says, this punishment is too much for me, is what Cain says in the English. But when we actually read it, it says, my guilt is too much to bear. I can't bear the guilt of this God. I can't do it. And anyone who finds me is going to kill me. So God then puts a mark on Cain. And we usually hear this mark as a mark of like punishment. Okay, everyone will know you're the sinner. But the mark is to protect him, to protect Cain. God forgives him. He absolves him. He says, this sin, Cain the murderer, my son one day will assume on the cross and put to death that you may be freed from it. The mark is a blessing. Do we receive a mark nowadays? Well, yeah. In the waters of holy baptism, the pastor says, receive the sign of the holy cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed. And remember, we've talked about redemption. Redeemed, rescued by Christ the crucified from sin, death, world, and the power of the devil. Those who desire your destruction, you are delivered from them in Jesus. Cain the murderer is who Jesus is on the cross so that Cain may be freed. And that's what forgiveness does. It frees you from the corruption of sin that you may be delivered unto eternity. So what sins are forgiven? All of them are. Even Cain the murderer, Cain the one who's envious, the one who takes his jealousy and lets it drive him. That guilt is too much for us to bear, and Christ bears it for us, that we may be forgiven. The debt canceled, the sin forgotten. God bless y'all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.